Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Ida Lupino, Brian Ahern, Dame May Whitty, and Edith Barrett in Ladies in Retirement. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Ladies and gentlemen, Ida Lupino was born in London during an air raid, the only star I know who began life in such stormy style. Of course, that was during the First World War when the bombing was done from Zeppelin. It was an exciting start to a career that hasn't had a dull moment since. Tonight, she's teamed with Brian Ahern, who's been acting in the big leagues for many seasons. The play is Ladies in Retirement, which had a long run on Broadway and then became a hit Columbia picture with Ida Lupino stars. For general excellence, our supporting cast is hard to beat because it's headed by Dame May Whitty and Edith Barrett. Miss Barrett is currently playing a part for me at Paramount in the story of Dr. Wassell. Ladies in Retirement is one of those plays an audience remembers for years. It's a strange and weird compound of love and hate and hope and horror. Good theater comes in many different forms, and Lux Toilet Soap brings you all of them. Looking for plays is like looking for new stars. There are almost no rules to guide the searcher, and yet there's more than luck in picking both of them. The men who sit for hours in darkened projection rooms looking at screen tests of potential starlets all have their own yardsticks to measure the candidates. One thing I always look for is a lovely complexion, and the acid test comes when a girl's face is magnified many times in a close-up. But long before that close-up is made, wise starlets go into training with Lux Toilet Soap. And now the curtain rises on the first act of Ladies in Retirement, starring Brian Ahern as Albert, Ida Lupino as Ellen, Dame May Whitty as Miss Fisk, and Edith Barrett as Louisa. England, 1885. On the marshlands in the region of the Thames estuary, a chill wind blows forever from the sea. It's a cheerless gray landscape, broken only by an occasional lonely house, surrounded by pockets and wisps of fog. At the doorway of one of these houses stands a girl, Ellen Creed. In her hand, she holds a letter just delivered. This letter will change the lives of many people. It will mean the death of one. Ellen! Ellen! Where are you? Yes, mister. Is there any mail? No. No, mister. Just this one letter for me. Oh, well. Don't miss the train, Ellen. No, I won't. And about that business I want you to see to for me in London. This note is for Mr. Scott at the bank. It's about those Brazilian bonds of mine, and... Uh, Ellen, you're not listening. Oh, but I am, mister. You seem upset. Bad news? Oh, I don't want to bother you with my troubles. Why, it isn't a question of bothering me. Why, you become almost like a daughter, Ellen. Well, mister, this letter is from my sisters, Emily and Louisa. They're very unhappy back in London without me. After all, I've only seen them once since I've come to work for you. Well, you'll be seeing them today, won't you? And then everything will be all right, I'm sure. Well, Miss Fitz, Bates is coming with the car. We'll tell him to hurry himself. My kind of regards to your sisters, Ellen. Thank you, Mr. I've written them so much about you. How kind you've been. Stop the nonsense. I thought perhaps you... You might allow them down for a little visit one day. Certainly, yes. At any time. Now, hurry, dear. Mr. Yes? Well, it's occurred to me that... Since they've been so wretched lately... And if it is all right to invite them... Might I bring them back with me this time? What now, Ellen? Oh, they won't be a bother, I promise, Mr. And it will mean so much to you. Very well, my dear. You bring them with you by all means, for a day or two. Oh, thank you, mistress. I can't tell you how grateful I am. Oh, well, don't cry, my dear. What did you say their names were? Emily and Louisa. They are quite a good deal older than I am, but I've always looked after them. Oh, well, run along. Run along. Tell them I'll be happy to see them. Thank you so much. <laughs> Oh, 
a little something sang Willow, Sweet Willow, Sweet Willow. And I said to him, Sweetie Bird, why do you sit singing? Willow, Tit Willow, Tit Willow. Who's out there? Who is it? Oh, oh go on, don't stop. Who are you? What are you doing at that window? Listening. Very nice, too. What do you want? Ask me in and I'll tell you. Very well, young man, you may come in. But mind your manners. Oh, I will. Well, isn't this where Miss Ellen Creed lives? Yes, she lives here. What do you wish to see her about? Oh, it's a personal matter. She's my aunt. Uh, I'm Albert Feather. Your aunt? Ellen? On a bright. Her mother was my stepfather's uncle's second wife. Where do you come from? Gravesend. I, uh, I work in a bank there. Oh, that's a very long walk. I'm afraid it's all been for nothing. Your Aunt Ellen's gone to London on some business for me. Oh? Uh, how long will she be away? Oh, a few days. A few? Oh, blimey. That'll be too late. Is there anything I can do? I'm Miss Fisk. Your Aunt's been working here as a sort of housekeeper companion. Oh. Oh, I, I didn't know. I haven't seen her for five years. Well, can I help? I wonder. Well, what's the trouble? Or is it trouble? <laughs> it's trouble right enough. Oh, I hardly like to tell you. Oh, I see. What's the amount? Twelve pounds. How much? Twelve pounds. That's a lot of money. I know. And what's worse, I've got to have it by tonight. I'm short at the bank. It means jail if I can't put it back before the cashier checks up. Gambling? No. It's, uh, it's a girl. Oh. Are you engaged, sir? Oh, no. He's an actress. She was in a travelling company in Gravesend. What, at the old Grand? You know it? Why, I played there. <laughs> Years ago, of course. Oh, were you an actress? Front row of the chorus. Fourth from the right. Oh, she was in the chorus, too. Mm. I expect you took her out to supper, and then she persuaded you to go around the shop with her. Now, how did you know? Oh, uh, imagination, my boy. Well, at any rate, she's over the hills now, to some other town, and to some other fool. That little sheep. Well, don't you worry any more about it. I'll give you the twelve pounds. You will? Perhaps I owe it to you, in a sense. Or to some other fool. Oh, you're a lifesaver. Now, you wait here. I'll just run upstairs and get my keys. It's a pity there aren't more like you. Well, that, my lad, is a matter of opinion. <laughs> hey, uh, do you mind if I tinkle on your ivories? No, do. <laughs> it's the time of the old world over. It's the poor what gets the blame. While the rich has all the pleasure. Now ain't that a flint in the shame? Oh, oh hello. Come in. Did you hear me? I thought I was hearing things. You were? Oh, but I mean the man's voice. So funny, yeah. Why, doesn't the tide wash up any male fish here, my lovely? No. Men's as scared as ants and cabs in these parts. That is all but the old ones. The young ones go off to London with some foreign parts. Soon as they can. Oh, and are you going up to foreign parts? Depends. Depends on what? Anyone ever up to me. Oh, I shouldn't think with eyes like them there'd be any difficulty. Oh, so <laughs> What's your name? Lucy. I'm the maid here. What's yours? Albert. I'm Miss Creed's nephew. Funny, I've never heard about you. Oh, that must be remedied. <laughs> How about making the most of a male piece? Now one is washed up, eh? What about a little... Oh, no, you mustn't. I don't know you. Oh, you don't have to know people to kiss them? Well, I do. Let me go, do you hear? <laughs> All right, my girl, it's your loss. Has Lucy been entertaining you, Albert? Hey? Oh, uh, she came in and uh, we were having a word or two, you know. Excuse me, ma'am. Nice looker, isn't he? I, uh, I didn't notice. Oh, come now, Albert. Don't lose your sense of humor. I hope you're not one of those people who won't benefit from experience. <laughs> Otherwise, my self sounds was rather wasted, won't it? Oh, don't you worry, Miss Fitz. I've had my lesson. I hope so. This is where I keep my little horn. It's an old bake oven, really. Ooh, proper too, ain't it? <laughs> yes. Here, yeah, what's that? That, uh, that iron poker thing? This is what they used to pull the loaves out with. Of course, we don't use it as a bake oven. It hasn't been used in years. Now then, 12 pounds, I think you said? I, uh, I suppose you couldn't make it 15. No, I couldn't. No, you couldn't. Well, do I, uh, do I give you an IOU? <laughs> no, thank you. This isn't a loan. I shouldn't like you to incur the remorse of not paying it back. You're a daisy. <laughs> now, let's forget all about it. If you come next week, you would have found three of your aunts here. Ellen's bringing her sisters back from London. What, the potty ones? Potty? Queer as mice in a cage. 
Oh, but they're, they're quite harmless. Especially when Aunt Ellen's around. Oh, that's a comfort. They're coming to stay here for a few days. They seem to mean quite a lot to your Aunt Ellen. Oh, they would. Why, she's looked after them since she was a kid. She watched over them like they was a couple of perishing babes in arms. Well, I think that's very commendable of her. Perhaps. Well, cheerio. Oh, uh, oh, by the way, uh, I'd appreciate it if you didn't mention our little uh, transaction to Aunt Ellen. Oh, <laughs> very well, if you like. Thanks. So long, my lady. I think you'd better have this scarf around you, dear. It's getting quite chilly. Listen, what's that? Those are the priory bells, Emily, from over the marshes. I shan't like that. Emily hates bells, especially church bells. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. Aren't the marshes pretty, Emily? No. The grass is too long and untidy. If I had a knife and a bit of string, I'd cut it and tie it up in bundles. Are there any sheep here in the marshes? You, gentlemen. They... My sister would like to know if there are any sheep on the marshes. Oh, yes, miss. I think sheep are so clever to chew their cuds the way they do. It's very difficult. I've tried. You ought to be a sailor, missy. They're always chewing tobacco. The man I wish to marry was a sailor. He gave me this telescope. It's all I have to remember him by. He was wrecked at sea. They were all drowned. Must have been a bit of sadness for you, missy. Oh, no, I've quite forgotten what he looked like. I saw a drowned man once. They took him out of the Thames. He was green. Oh, oh, look. There's a bird's nest in the road. Yes, so there is. I should like to have that, Ellen. Wait, please stop, will you? Yes, miss. Oh, that's cool. Be careful, Emily. Yes, Emily likes bird's nest. She always did. But I don't. I have it. Look, isn't it beautiful? Oh, dear, it's all cobwebby. And it has a horrid smell. It mustn't be wasted. I shall save it till next year, and then I'll put it back again. Who knows where we'll be next year? Well, not in London, anyway. You promised that, Ellen. Yes, dear, I promised that. Look, look at my arm, Ellen. Louisa, how did you get that mark? She did it. She beat me. Who? That woman in London. She didn't give us enough food, either. Discipline, she said. Louisa used to cry all night. I didn't. She couldn't discipline me. We'll be all right here, though, won't we, with Miss Swift? She won't beat us. No, darling. She won't be you. No one will again. Ever. Miss Fitz, my sister Emily and my sister Louisa. How do you do, Emily? We are very glad to be here. Louisa, how are you? Don't touch me, please. Well, I don't like people to touch me. Really? Louisa, dear. I'm afraid Miss Fitz will think you're very rude. She doesn't like people to touch her, that's all. Oh, what beautiful furniture. Just like we used to have before we lost all our money. Some of these are our things here. Miss Fitz bought them at my curio shop before I came to live here. I want my tea. And I want to walk. But smelly train was very dirty. She's always talking about the dirt. I want to keep things tidy, yes. Yeah? Well, cleanliness is next to godliness. Don't you agree? <laughs> I'm quite clean, I believe. I don't know that I'm particularly godly. Oh, I thought you were a Roman. Isn't that your shrine there? All those candles and... Miss Fitz is a Roman, dear, and a very devoted one. Now, come along, both of you. Father didn't approve of Roman, and neither do I. Now, come, dear. They are tired, Miss Fitz. They've had a long trip. Yes, I'm tired, then. I'm not. I never get tired. Sometimes I walk about the house all night. <laughs> I can't stand it. I just can't stand it, Lucy. I'm utterly exhausted clearing up after their messes. Oh, I don't wonder, miss. So am I. And you should see their bedroom. It's like a goat's pen. I know it. If it isn't one thing, it's another. Why, for the last six weeks, I might just as well have been living in the middle of Piccadilly Circus. My heart won't stand it. Go and get me my smelling salts. Yes, and... Oh, uh, Miss Fisk. Yes, what is it? Will they be staying much longer? They have my invitation to go this evening. Oh, dear. I wonder where Emily's gone to. 
She ought to be back by now. I can't see her anywhere, even through my telescope. I wish I were brave like Emily. I should like to take long walks, too, and pick up things. Perhaps I shall be able to after we've stayed here longer. Oh, I'm sure you will, dear. I shall be staying here, shan't I? You're not planning to send us away, are you, Ellen? No, dear, of course I'm not. Now, come along. Let's walk back to the house. Perhaps Emily's there. This is what you always promised us, Ellen. A little place in the country where we can always be safe. Yes, dear. That's the one thing I've been working for ever since we had to give up the old house. Well, naturally, estuary house could never be like that. But it's nice enough. And Miss Fisk has been very kind to us. Miss Fisk. May I tell you something, Ellen? Just one of my secrets. Of course you may, dear. I don't like Miss Fisk. Couldn't we send her away? Then it would really be just the three of us. But, Louisa, I keep telling you, it's her house. Oh, no, you'll never make me believe that. All our lovely things are there. We'll never have to go away, will we? No, darling. I've promised you. Never. What in the world are you doing here? I brought some wood. I got a nice lot today. I found it on the riverbank. Oh, what are you thinking of? Making a mess like that all over my clean floor? I must tidy up the riverbanks. I hate waste. And I hate litter. Now you clear it away immediately. I won't be ordered to do things. Oh, this is too much. And look at my best polished table. Look how these shelves have scratched it. And what's this? Wet seaweed and... And a horrid dead bird. Oh, leave my bird alone. It's going in the fireplace where it belongs. No. There. No. Oh, you. That was one of my treasures. My treasures. Emily. Emily, what's wrong? I hate her. She threw my bird into the fireplace. Emily, control yourself. Look what she's done with her ridiculous shells. It will take months of hard polishing to put that table right. Oh, I'm so sorry, Miss Fitz. I'll put it right. Oh, no, Ellen, you shan't do it. You shan't do it. I'll do it. Let me do it. I'll polish it every day, all through the winter. That's very sweet of you, Miss Louisa. But I don't think you'll be here all through the winter. Oh, but we shall. Ellen said so. You're mistaken, Louisa. I said nothing of the kind. But you did. You promised. Louisa, will you be quiet? You promised. Oh, my heavens. <laughs> this is the last straw. You drive me as crazy as you're telling. Ellen, she said... Oh, Helen. Miss Fisk. You shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say it. But I've had about as much as I can endure. Oh, no. Emily, take Louisa upstairs. Now stop your crying, Louisa. There's nothing to cry about. Well, do you hear? Go upstairs, both of you, and close the door behind you. Come, Louisa. That was a cruel thing to say. But it's true. One with her telescope and the other with her mania for collecting things. They are insane, both of them. Please don't use that word again. Emily was right. People who have all they want never seem to understand how much the smallest things mean to those who haven't. Oh, really? I don't think this calls for a sermon. I've been more than generous to you and your sisters. Well, people have always been very generous to you, Mistress. My sisters and I have never had any friends to send us money. That's hardly my fault, is it? No. But don't you ever feel that you might have a responsibility to those less fortunate than you? I don't know what you're talking about. Life hasn't been very kind to us, Miss Every penny we've ever had, I've had to work for. Every penny. So you can't blame me for fighting for my family. That's very admirable. But it's your family and not mine. And let me tell you this. Your sisters, insane or not, have overstayed their welcome. I invited them for two days, and they've stayed six weeks. Or perhaps you were planning to keep them here forever. Well, I... I had thought that I might pay something out of my wages toward their keep. Ellen, you're a hypocrite. You're worse. You're a cheat. You meant to foist your wretched brood on me and bleed me white. But you've chosen the wrong woman. You'll get those sisters of yours out of this house at once. And you'll take a month's wages and go with them. Miss Fisk. Who's there? Who's out there? Who is it? Miss Fisk. May I come in? What are you prowling about at this hour? I wanted to talk to you. Please. Well, mind your tongue, girl. We don't want any more of this afternoon's unpleasantness. I'm so sorry about that, Miss Fisk. I shouldn't have spoken to you as I did. No, you shouldn't. Miss Fisk. 
Do you remember the letter that arrived the day I went away to London? Yes, what about it? Well, it was from their landlady. Emily and Louisa had, well, been a little difficult. She'd sent for the police. They were going to be put away in an institution. The landlady was quite right. That's where they belong. But, Miss Fitz, you don't understand. They're my sisters. They've no one else in the world to turn to but me. That's why I can't send them away. Ellen! Oh, I promise they'll never come anywhere near you again. You'll never even know they're in the house. I, I, I'll look after them myself. I'll cook their meals for them. Oh, I promise they won't be any more trouble. Miss Fitz, they must be with me. They must. Ellen, have you quite gone out of your mind? You must be blind if you can't realize they'd always be getting in my way. No. You pack them off tomorrow. Tomorrow. Do you understand? Yes, Mr. I understand. <laughs> oh, Ellen. Stop crying, Linda. Go to sleep, dear. But you told her you were going to send us away. I'm not going to send you away. We heard you. We were listening. Isn't she terrible, Ellen? She's wretched. I'm not going to send you away. Never. Never, dear. Never. Well, then, if you're not going to send us away, what are you going to do? I don't know. I'm think. I must think. In a few moments, Mr. DeMille and our stars Brian Ahern, Ida Lupino, Dame Mae Whitty, and Edith Barrett will return in Act Two of Ladies in Retirement. And now, here's a young lady I think you may recognize. She's busy. I won't be right home from the office tonight, Mother. I promised to put in an extra hour at the canteen. She's popular. Hello, Jim. Yes, I heard you were going back to camp tomorrow. A late movie? Why, yes, of course. And she's smart. Whew. One o'clock. Guess I missed my beauty sleep. <laughs> but I'm not missing my beauty care. <laughs> not after the way Jim kept calling me gorgeous all evening. Well, she's a luxe girl, of course. As modern as a minute, and mighty attractive, too. A girl with the irresistible charm of smooth, lovely skin. She's found a complexion care that works. And she's wise enough never to neglect it. She says... My Lux Soap Active Lather Facials are so quick and easy. Here's all I do. I smooth lots of the creamy lather well in. I rinse with warm water, then splash on cold, and use a soft towel to pat my face dry. It's wonderful how smooth and soft that rich lather makes my skin feel. Now there's the gentle complexion care used by lovely women all over the country. Busy women, like the screen stars, who devote so many of their leisure hours to war work. Nine out of ten of them depend on Lux Toilet Soap to give their skin thorough daily care it must have to stay smooth and fresh. Lux Toilet Soap is a real beauty soap, you see. Hard milled and satin smooth. With lather so rich and luxurious, it feels like a caress on the skin. Why not try these daily active lather facial screen stars you? Put Lux Toilet Soap on your shopping list for tomorrow. And if your dealer happens to be temporarily out of stock due to wartime conditions, please be patient. You'll have more shortly. Remember, Lux Toilet Soap is worth waiting for. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act Two of Ladies in Retirement. Starring Ida Lupino as Ellen, Brianna Hearn as Albert, Dame May Whitty as Miss Fisk, and Edith Barrett as Louisa. <laughs> I'm not going to send you away. I must think. I must think. The night is over. And Ellen's plans have been made. Dark, deep plans. Hatched in the black of night. Tuned to the mournful sighing of the wind. In their room, the two mad sisters wait for Ellen. They are dressed for traveling. I've always wanted to explore an old castle. Will it have a dungeon, do you think? They all have dungeons, and there's sure to be secret passageways and places where they hide things. Yes. 
And I'm sure Miss Fisk has lots of exciting things hidden in this house. Her jewels, I'm sure. I've looked in all her boxes and haven't been able to find them. I know where she keeps them. In that oven downstairs. The one with the iron door. Are you both ready? Oh, yes, Ellen. I managed to pack all the lunch into one bag. Mine. Now, dears, come here and sit down. I haven't told you the real reason why you're being sent away for the whole day. The truth is, I want to be entirely alone with Miss Fisk for a few hours. Is that why you got rid of Lucy, too? I didn't get rid of Lucy, Emily. She had a toothache. Oh, Ellen, dear, you know that's not true. She didn't want to go at all. I said she had a toothache, Louisa. Now, listen. Last night, while you were both asleep, I had a long talk with Miss Fisk. She's tired of the marshes and wants to travel for a bit. I persuaded her to tell me this house. Not really, Ellen. We haven't discussed price yet. That's why I must be alone with her. She may want more than you're prepared to pay. I'm prepared to pay quite a big price, Emily. Oh, lovely, lovely. Yes. Now, there's one more thing. The most important. You see this Bible, both of you. Well, I want you to swear on it by Father's memory that you will never repeat a word of my buying this house as long as you live. What do I say? Just say, I swear. Oh, I swear. You too, Emily. I won't swear on the Bible. It's wicked. If you don't, Emily, I shan't buy the house and I'll send you both back to London. Oh, Emily, be sensible. I don't like being made to do things. I promise. Now, remember, that is a sacred oath. Well, here's me. Hurry now, there's no time to waste. <laughs> Oh, Ellen. Ellen. Yes, Miss Fisk. Oh, <laughs> you startled me. I'm so sorry. It's quite all right, dear. I just didn't realize you were there. <sighs> I must say it's quite pleasant here this evening. And quiet for a change. You mean now that my sisters have gone? I'm sorry, dear. I didn't mean to hurt you. You haven't hurt me. I'm sorry. You might turn the lamps on, Ellen, dear. It's getting quite dark. I could scarcely see the music sheet. Ellen, did you hear me? Turn on the lamps, dear. I don't want to ask you again. Good evening. Yes. What do you want? Maybe come in. Are you none? Yes, we're from the Priory, just down the road. We'd like to speak to Miss Ellen, unless Miss Fisk is there. No, she isn't. Miss Fisk has been away for over two weeks. So we heard. I wonder if you'd tell Miss Ellen... She's that... busy in the kitchen. Emily, Emily, where are your manners here? Come in, sister. Oh, thank you, Miss Ellen. I didn't know you were here. We were just in the middle of putting up some quince jam. Oh, please don't apologize. I'm afraid we've come on a begging errand. Our supply of oil hasn't arrived from Rochester. And the Reverend Mother wondered if we might borrow a can for over Sunday. Why, of course. Lucy, will you run off into the shed and bring in a can of paraffin? Yes, Miss Ellen. I noticed the candles are burning at the shrine, Miss Ellen. Oh, yes. Ellen's taken to lighting them lately. She thinks Miss Fisk would like her to. She says it keeps her memory burning. Oh. When are you expecting her back? Well, I really couldn't say, Sister Teresa. She hasn't written for over a fortnight. We were so surprised to learn she'd gone. She hadn't mentioned she was planning a journey. No. No, it was quite unexpected. She had a letter from some old friends inviting her on a trip. The Reverend Mother has been wondering what you know about the rent from the little three-acre field we hire from this trip. Well, I'm managing all her affairs while she's away. If you'll send it to me, I'll forward it when I get her next address. Mr. Lamp or Miss Ellen? Oh, thank you. Thank you, Miss Ellen. Not at all, sisters. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Louisa, Louisa, 
answer the door, dear. Yes, Ellen. Hello. Oh. oh, all right, all right. Don't yell like that. I won't eat you. Louisa, what's the matter? Oh. Who are you? And what do you want? Well, dear oh. Aunt Ellen, after all these years, <laughs> I'm Albert. Don't you remember me? Albert? Of course. Rose's boy. That's right. So it is. Fancy Albert being here. Where on earth did you come from? Gravesend on a duck's back. <laughs> it's Albert right enough, always saying funny things. <laughs> oh, he's so true. Yes, so I see. Well, don't stand there dripping all over my best rug. Get along to the kitchen fire with your wet things. Now, oh, that's more like my loving auntie. My very distant auntie. Now we'll have fun with Albert here. I'll go and set your dressing down. And I'll get a towel so you can dry yourself. Well, blimey, if it isn't a regular family. What a reunion, a real homecoming, this. Albert, why have you come here? Well, that can wait till I'm dry outside and uh, not to dry in, eh? <laughs> Fine house here, Auntie. I say, is this all yours? No, of course not. Belongs to the woman I work for. It's fit. Oh, and where is she, might I ask? Away. Away, eh? Fine. <laughs> well, five years, Auntie, old girl. What of it? You've changed. You've not. Same big blue eyes, though. And still, lady, touch me not, eh? Let hey, go of me. I'm in no mood for your foolishness. And the way you seem to be all keyed up, a little of my foolishness might do you no harm. Here's a dressing gown now. Oh, thanks, my girl. I'll slip into this later. Now, dears, run up to bed, both of you. I want to talk with Albert. But we don't want to go to bed. No, we want to stay and talk to Albert. Go on, do as Aunt Ellen says. Total up to bye-bye like good little girls. Very well. Good night, Albert. Good night, my lady. Good night, Albert. Good night. Now, Albert, let's get down to cases. Why have you come here and what do you want? Well, Auntie, uh, to cut it fine, I'm uh, I'm sort of taking a compulsory holiday from the bank over at Gravesend, where I've been working. In other words, you've lost your job. Oh, I've given it up. You haven't done anything wrong, have you? Well, I uh, I sort of uh, helped myself to a little salary I wasn't entitled to. You mean you've stolen money? You've got it, Auntie. How much? Oh, a small matter of uh, hundred pounds. I see. So I suppose you want me to give you a hundred pounds so you can put it back. Oh, I'm afraid it's too late for that. They've found out. The police have. The police? Yes, a friend passed me the tip they were coming, so uh, I took French leave. Yes, but they'll follow you. They'll come here. Oh, don't worry. No one knows I've got relations out here on the marshes. I'd be stay here for a lifetime. Well, you're certainly not going to stay here for a lifetime. Well, surely you don't mind my staying here for a little while, do you? Till it all blows over. And then what do you propose to do? Oh, clear out of the country. America, Australia, any old where. But I'm counting on you to help me. I need money for the passage. I'm so Oh, I don't see why I should concern myself with your affairs. I'll land in prison if you don't. Oh, you're not the sort to turn down somebody who was in trouble and needed your help. You wouldn't fail your own flesh and blood, would you? I'm no flesh and blood of yours, Elder. Oh, won't you give me a chance to start again? I promise. Cross me, Arthur. I'll never do anything wrong again for the rest of my life. Oh, now, come on. Please. Let me go. Oh, very well, I'll do it. Bless you, Ellen. You're a daisy, you are. We'll talk about it in the morning. You sleep on the sofa tonight. Oh, I don't mind where I sleep, old girl. You seem to be taking this all very lightly, Albert. You have told me the worst, haven't you? I mean, there isn't anything else. What else? Well, there are worse things than stealing. As for instance? Oh, no, there's no blood on the end. <laughs> Putting people out calls for real nerve, you know. Yes. Good night, Albert. Night, good night. What do you think you're doing there? Oh, oh, uh, <laughs> good morning, Lucy, my girl. I was, uh, I was just fooling around with this padlock, and uh, and it came off. Well, you shouldn't have. That oven's well as six keeps the valuables. Well, how does she get at them with a pickaxe? Look, there's nothing behind that door but a wall. Well, I never. All fixed up. I wonder when that was done. It wasn't that way the last time I was here. Oh, so you've had your nose in there before, haven't Funny you? what nasty thoughts people have sometimes, isn't it, Lucy? Funny how they're right sometimes, isn't it? Now, I wonder why anybody would want to pick up a place like that. Well, why didn't the sister put her jewels in there before she went to well, If there's any sparklers in there, I wouldn't mind having a peep. Oh, I'm sure you wouldn't. Well, neither would you, I dare say. <laughs> in fact, I'm sure you'd like to feel it somewhere around your swan-like neck. 
pretty pink here like this. Calls for a diamond, eh? In your face, Mr. Albert, is calling for a good slap. It's wicked to slap a man's face on Sunday. The better the die, the better the deed. Oh, well, that leaves me conscience clear. Come on, Oh, no, I'll scream. <laughs> what's that? What's that? Scream? Oh, no, no. What do you think I'm made of? <laughs> Bigger and spikes and everything nice. Oh, let me go. <laughs> Someone's coming. Oh, who's that? Helen? Good morning, Albert. Oh, well, hello, Emily. My old cup of tea? Back from church, eh? Well, what are you doing with those bulrushes? Looking for Moses? <laughs> you're making fun of me, naughty boy. Oh, Emily, I'm glad you're back before the others. It isn't often I've got the chance of a tete a tete with the family's fairest. <laughs> you're never serious about anything, oh, I Albert. I was never more serious in my life. There was a letter left yesterday. It's for Miss Fitz. I found it in the box outside. Miss Fitz, yes. Emily, what's going to happen to you when Miss Fitz gets back? Will she let you stay on? She isn't coming back. Oh, why not? Ellen bought the house. Huh? Oh, go on. Oh, yes, it's quite true. It's a secret, though. Ellen made a swear on the Bible that we wouldn't tell. Why would she want to keep it a secret, huh? I don't know. It was all done in a great hurry. Uh, oh, dear. You won't tell Ellen I told you, will you, Albert? Uh, no, no. We'll, uh, we'll make that our little secret, shall we? All right. It would be rather fun having a secret from Ellen. She thinks she's the clever one, but she isn't. Not always. No. Not always. Albert, I want to talk to you. Hi. Right. What about? Albert, I don't want you to mention Miss Fitz again in front of my sisters. They quarreled with her. And it upset them very much to talk about her. Oh, sorry, nobody told me. What did you quarrel about? I didn't say I quarreled with her. Would she by any chance be the friend you were scandaled for last night? Yes. When did she die? Die? Who said anything about her being dead? Well, I just assumed she was. You don't like candles for the living, do you? I don't know. I just thought this was the prayer. Oh, by the way, there was uh, there was a letter for Miss Fitz. From her bank, I believe. Give it to me. I'm managing all her affairs while she's away. You are, eh? Well, you were always the one for figures. Uh, is it anything important? Yes, rather. Get an answer in the post immediately. Excuse me. Charlie's looking piano you've got here. Don't distract me, Albert. I'm going to concentrate. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't mind me, Auntie. Well, there you are, today. Oh, I didn't expect to find a copy of the Mikado way out here on the marshes. Don't do that. Sorry, I didn't mean to suspect you. It's just that I happen to dislike that particular tune, that's all. Yeah. It is a bit on the mortgage. Miss Ellen, how soon will you want dinner? In about half an hour, Lucy. I want you to post this letter at the crossing. Oh, let me go, Ellen. Uh, I could do with a sniff of air. No, thank you. Lucy will do it. <laughs> This letter, you heard it, Miss Ellen said. Nobody, my girl. Here, here. Let's see that letter, will you? Thank you. What dare you? You've no right to open that. Open by error, my girl. No one will be the wiser. Here, sir. In regard to my pet, something or other. What, here, what, what does that word look like to you? S-E-R-I. Strained. That's it. Owing to a strained wrist. Something yours, Leonora Fitz. Here, find it, Leonora Fitz. What's it mean? What do you think? Well, it looks as if she's pretending to be Miss Fitz and, and getting money on the strength of it. Brilliant. That's true. She's a thief. Flat you. Shut up. What'll happen when Miss Fitz comes back? Ah, supposing she isn't coming back. Suppose she's died somewhere, and Ellen's the only one who knows. Well, you can't die and only one person know it. Oh, can't you? I'm not so sure. One thing I do know, she'd never take the risk unless she was positive Miss Fitz was out of the way for good. Well, all right. I think she's dead and Aunt Ellen's tapping the family. Might be years before anybody would find out. Now, why should she leave all the benefits? There might be some pickings in it for us. Ah. Oh. Lucy, wouldn't you like to see a bit of the world? Have some fun with me? You'd come down with himself, wouldn't you? You've got to help me get through. Well, I, I don't want to do anything mean or underhanded. Oh, would I ask you to? Just use your eyes and keep your ears open. That's all. Now, what do you think? Look at the eyes. 
Uh, uh, this will help you, Major. Well? I... Honey, Joe, this is my girl. That's my little Lucy. <laughs> Pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille presents Brian Ahern, Ida Lupino, Dame May Whitty, and Edith Barrett in the third act of Ladies in Retirement. You know, there are some things people will always argue about. For instance, a shower, not a safe one. The only way to get a real bath is in a bathtub. That way a man can relax, really enjoy his bath. But to me, a bathtub's old-fashioned. Why well, can't get started for the day without a good quick shower? Kept me up, makes me feel swell. Well, there you have two opposite opinions. But in one important point, they see eye to eye. We, we want, want a soap that lathers. Well, what they want, of course, is Lux Toilet Soap. A soap that makes any bath a luxury, whether it's tub or shower. Even in hard water, Lux Soap gives rich, creamy lather and lots of it. Active lather that cleanses thoroughly, carries away dust and grime in a jiffy. Now, here's a suggestion to the ladies in our audience. Why not see to it that the men in your family enjoy Lux Toilet Soap as their daily bath soap, too? They'll be just as enthusiastic about it as you are. These strenuous days especially, they'll appreciate the quick refreshment of a Lux Soap bath. Lux is a quality soap, made only of the finest ingredients. But it's thrifty to buy, because this famous white soap costs you only a few cents. And it's thrifty to use, because Lux Toilet Soap is hard mill. That means it won't get mushy or soft. You can use each cake down to the last thin sliver. Right now, that's especially important. It's patriotic not to waste soap, you know. Lux toilet soap will last even longer if it's always put in a soap dish that's dry. Why not get some of this fine soap tomorrow? And now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. Our stars have a date with you after the play. Here's Act Three of Ladies in Retirement. Starring Brian Ahern, Ida Lupino, Dame May Whitty, and Edith Barrett. Late at night, the house lies sleeping in the moonlight. But Ellen is awake. A face drawn and haggard, she paces the floor of her room. The great secret locked within her, giving her no rest. Who is it? Yes, what do you want? It's up here. I left this myself. Well, I've a cure for that. You have? Let's hear it, Auntie. There's a boat sailing for Canada on Friday. You're sailing with it. No, I'm not so sure I want to go to Canada yet a while. No, I'm very happy here. Well, I'm not happy having you. Why? Well, for one thing, it isn't safe. Just to raise with the fire and knows you're staying here with it. I don't suppose there was a scandal on your account. There's more to it than that. Luke pulls up to talk. Oh, I don't think we need to worry about that. No, we've made sure of that. Now, whatever do you mean by that? You know what I mean, you cheap little back here. Stop it, Ellen. You're not going to make me lose my temper. Your temper. You'll be leaving here first thing in the morning, and that'll be the end of you and your temper. I shouldn't try to bluff me if I were you. I'm not trying to bluff you, Albert. I'm ordering you. And if I shouldn't choose to be ordered? Well, I can't tell you are sick here. But I can send to the police. And have your scandal. Yeah, you're being very inconsistent now, aren't you, dear? You won't send for the police. Why are you so sure? Because you're the medical. A more important reason for not wanting the police to hear. Sir, as a matter of fact, you're right. Ah, well, now we're getting down to brass tacks. Would it, uh, would it concern Miss Higgs-Brian, John? It would, and it does. I met her in town today. She's coming back. She's coming back? And why shouldn't she? What she's done for good. How oh, utterly absurd of you, Albert. Never been any question of her not coming back. And why didn't you say so in the first place? Well, you say the fool so much with Emily and Louisa. I was afraid you'd blurt it out. It means they'll have to go too. Oh. Why, little country holiday has obviously come to an end. I don't know what the places I'll do in Canada, but I suppose one can starve there as well as anywhere else. Oh, you'll get on. 
I'll give you a little something to start off with for your mother's sake. I suppose I should extend my most humble thanks. No, that from you would be too much. Oh, well, if that's all we have to say to each other, I may as well get up to bed. A good night's sleep wouldn't do you any harm either. You look a bit played out. Uh, shall I be seeing you in the morning before I leave? Yes. Good. Oh, uh, I forgot to tell you, Auntie. I had a funny dream last night. Oh, did you? Yes. I dreamt Miss Fisk was dead. <laughs> good night, Auntie. Now I'll do mine. Does it mean, Albert? It means Miss Fisk is dead. And someone has a guilty conscience. Now get up to your room. She's sick, Albert. I'm worried about her. I brought her tea this morning. She wouldn't have it. Oh, a bit of an upset stomach, I imagine. Nothing to worry about. She was walking in her sleep and had a nightmare, that's all. It wasn't a nightmare, Albert. Oh, what was it then? She said she saw a ghost. Huh. In that case, lay another place for breakfast. Do you, do you really think it was a ghost, Emily? If it were only a nightmare, we wouldn't have heard it too. Heard what? The music. Miss Fisk's music. Do you know, Emily, I'm sometimes afraid Miss Fisk will get the better of Ellen. I sometimes think she wants to come back and turn us out. I think Miss Fisk is here now. Well, what are you two whispering about? Hadn't you better go for your walk now? Yes, Ellen. Anything you say, Ellen. Do you think you're strong enough to be up? Yes, dear. I'm quite all right now. Hadn't you better call a doctor? No, a doctor wouldn't do any good. Well, why are you two standing there like a couple of little owls? Emily's been frightening me. You've been imagining things, both of you. Now, run along to your walk. Whatever you say, Ellen, you know best. Well, Aunt Ellen... We didn't expect you down today. Why aren't you ready yet? Bates will be here at any moment to take her to the boat. That was that queer turn you had last night. What happened? Nothing. You know, you really should do something about your nerves. This isn't the first time you've walked in your sleep, according to Emily. What has Emily been telling you? Oh, just her usual chatter. They do say, though, that people who walk in their sleep have something on their conscience. What's behind that remark, Albert? Oh, nothing. You know, it's funny... Miss Fisk went away and she didn't even take her clothes. There, there's a whole closet full in her room. I, uh, I look. Well? But there's one missing. The one she was wearing last night when she played the piano. You know. And it was you down here last night? Yes, me and Lucy. I played the piano. Lucy played Miss Fisk. Very good performance, I think. She knows, too. Not what I know. 
That's something you and I are going to keep to ourselves. Provided, of course, that you treat me right. What are you going to do? Well, as I said, I'm very happy here. I think with your financial assistance, I'll be able to adjust the things at the bank and uh, we can all settle down in peace, a contented little family. You mean you propose to go on living here? With me? Why not? Well, you'd never be quite sure, would you? You might not enjoy your meals. You wouldn't dare the second time. It takes a lot of courage to kill for the first time, Albert. But once you've sold your soul to the devil, it becomes easier. Much easier. All right. All right. Give me 500 pounds and I'll clear out for good and keep them out here. I'm not afraid of you, Albert, and your shabby little tricks. In the middle of the night, you may fancy yourself cutting quite a figure. But it's broad daylight now. I see with you. Those nuns. Well, get out of sight quickly. Good day, sister. Miss Ellen. We must talk to you right away. Are you alone? Why, yes. What's the matter? It's really none of our business. But the police led them to the prior. What about? They're searching for a young man who stole money from the bank. From the description, we suspected it was your nephew. And we thought, if we were told, I might have a chance to do the right thing he did in It is your nephew. Yes, sir. I mustn't search here. They've gone over to the Coy Farm first. We heard one of them say so. Oh, Miss Ellen, have we done wrong in coming to warn you? I don't know, sister. I had a brother rather like that. He went wrong, too. People are easily lost, aren't they? Yes, they are. Poor girl. You have so many burdens. If you're referring to Albert, he means absolutely nothing to me. No one does for that matter. Except Emily and Louisa. Well, if at any time we at the Priory can do anything to make things easier for you or your sister, don't hesitate to turn to us. My sister? We would be glad to help them in any way we could. Very kind of you, Sister Graver. But you know we're not of your faith. In my father's house so many men too. Good day, Miss. Good day, sister. Why, I thought they'd never go. Thanks for putting in a good word for me. The Coy Farm, is it? Well, that'll give me a chance to get around behind them to the river. Sorry, there's no time to lose. Oh, I've got to move past. Here, here, where's that money in the ticket? On the table. You better make a dash for it, too. Don't stand there mooning about. Put your things on and let's get out of here. I'm not going. Are you out of your mind? You know what will happen. They'll sit down. Every nook and cranny. They'll even open up that iron door over there. Bricks behind it, they'll say. And they'll tear the bricks out. You know what they'll find. And you know what they'll do to you. I'm not going. You'd better hurry, Albert. Well, if that don't beat the car. So long, Ellen. No hard feelings. <laughs> Coming from the house. Ellen. Ellen. Oh, Ellen, it was so funny. We just saw Albert. He was playing tag with some men. But he didn't win. They caught him. He got quite annoyed. Oh, Ellen, look. We found a lot of jackdaw feathers. We're going to tie them into bundles and make little dusters. Yes, dear. I've been waiting for you to come back. You see, I'm going away. And I wanted to speak with you before I left. Ellen, where are you going? I'm going to the Coy Farm, dear. There are some gentlemen there from Gravesend, and I want to see them. You won't bring them back here, will you, Ellen? It's so nice and peaceful by ourselves. No, dear. I'll try not to bring them back. You have been happy here, haven't you? We are happy here, aren't we, Emily? Oh, yes, it's much better than London. It's so good of you to have bought this house for us. You have been clever, Ellen. How long will you be? Well, I, I don't know, dear. I may be quite a time. And when I'm gone, I think you might go down to the Priory and speak to the sisters there. They're very kind, dear. And they have a lovely collection of shells for you to see. We'll be all right. Yes, of course you will. But what do you have to go for, Ellen? What, what do you have to do? I told you, dear. Those gentlemen want to see me. You said you wanted to see them. Yes, I do. Goodbye, Louisa, dear. Goodbye. Goodbye, Emily. Goodbye. Goodbye, Emily. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth 
and it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. Forgive us our debts. says well done to every single member of our cast. And now Ida Lupino and Brian Ahern return to the footlights. You know, C.B., every time Ida plays one of those very dramatic parts, I always wonder how she can top it. Well, we'll find out. What do you do in your latest picture, Ida? Well, at one point, the man playing opposite me gets very violent and throws me up in the air. Then I put a headlock on him and bring him around for a while. The result is in doubt. He's trying to kill you, I suppose. No, no, it's a bit about doubt. Hmm. What won't they think of next? Oh, come on, C.B., you've got to get in the groove. No, I guess I'm just, uh, not pep. <laughs> hey, you must have been eavesdropping at one of Ida's parties for soldiers. <laughs> no, but I, I've heard they're solid. Uh, what gives at your parties, Ida? Uh, well, what always happens when a lot of soldiers get together? They eat for three or four hours. Mm, you do the cooking? <laughs> no, I don't. You see, I want to help win the war. My mother does the cooking and I do the serving. Oh, I do the wonderful hostess. I can guarantee that from personal experience. Well, you should see Brian acting as a host at the Hollywood canteen. I suppose right up front, greeting people. No, way out back, washing the dishes. <laughs> I, I enjoy it, though. Uh, you may get some offers after that comment. <laughs> I can use you, Brian. Can you use me, either? Well, I might. But anyway, I can use Lux soap. And have for years. Did anyone ever tell you it was a wonderful soap, Mr. DeMille? Hmm. That complexion of yours speaks volumes, Ida. Well, well. How about a few short volumes on next week's play, C.B.? That's a true drama, Brian. The true drama of a great American. The play is Samuel Goldwyn's thrilling motion picture story of Lou Gehrig, The Pride of the Yankees. And our stars will be Gary Cooper and Virginia Bruce. Lou Gehrig was the idol of millions on the baseball diamond, but his real heroism was above and beyond sport. And next Monday night, Gary Cooper will again bring to life the inspiring story of Lou Gehrig and his iron courage. Well, you don't have to be a baseball fan to enjoy that play, Mr. Camille. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. You've got a return ticket. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night, when the Lux Radio Theater presents Gary Cooper in the Pride of the Yankees with Virginia Bruce and Edgar Buchanan. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Here is a message for the ladies, a way they can help save the lives of American soldiers. Our government needs waste kitchen fat to make glycerin for explosives. Now that's just waste fat. After all, the cooking good is gone from them. Strain bacon grease, meat drippings, and other fats into a wide mouth can. Your meat dealer will pay you for them. The part of Emily was played tonight by B. Benadera. Others heard in tonight's play were Truda Marston as Lucy and Gloria Gordon, Claire Verdera, and Eric Snowden. Ida Lupino's new picture is the Warner Brothers production, Thank Your Lucky Stars. Brian O'Hearn, Columbia Pictures star, is currently seen in First Come Courage. Jane May Whitty's next picture is the Metro Goldwyn Mayer production, White Cliffs of Dover. Our music was directed by Louis Silver. And this is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in next Monday night to hear Gary Cooper in The Pride of the Yankees with Virginia Bruce and Edgar Buchanan. Make sure you get the vitamins and minerals your family needs in spite of food shortages. Get Vim. They're scientifically designed to help make meals complete. Vim's give you all the vitamins government experts say are essential, balanced in the formula doctors endorse. All the minerals commonly lacking, too. Yet Vim's cost only a nickel a day in the family size at your druggist. It's CI for vitamins, double MS for minerals. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.